If you were a reader when you were a child, you probably have read Harry Potter. I don't think I need to explain how popular Harry Potter is just from the fact I know I don't even have to explain the series' premise to you. It's completely omnipresent in the world of young adult fiction. It was a huge success, especially since most of the popular young adult literature before it was afraid to use fantastical elements. They all dwelled in a solid reality where the full scope of creativity was caged. Harry Potter was one of those series that likes to pull on Neil deGrasse Tyson and go... Actually... Don't get me wrong, it wasn't the first, but children and teenagers were tired of drinking their boring water fiction and instead wanted something with flavor. And so Harry Potter was a success. And where there is a success, there is a market. And the market is huge. So huge, in fact, that we have these kinds of books all over the place. They're also popular all over the world, but you never really see many foreign-made, modern young adult novels get super popular here in our English-speaking regions. But recently, that's been changing with a certain subculture of fiction making its way all the way from the land of the rising sun. Welcome to the world of light novels. For the general English-speaking public and those who want extreme specifics, a light novel is a novel written in prose that was originally published in Japan for an audience of adolescents to young adults by certain book imprints. Typically, they're published in a volume format where each book is technically a standalone story, but they will carry on to the next volume in their respective series. For example, the goal of Konosuba as a series is to defeat the Demon Lord, but at the end of Volume 1, only a few steps have been made towards achieving that goal. The goal hasn't been completed yet. This leads to Volume 2, which takes a few more steps forward. In short, they're serialized. They usually come adorned with beautiful manga-style illustrations. Japan is very cross-media with its pop culture, so it's only to be expected. If a light novel sells well enough, it can even get a manga and anime adaptation. But most importantly when it comes to light novels, is that they will also include out-of-this-world plotline and settings. Excel World, written by Reki Kawahara, author of Sword Art Online, vastly improved his writing skills since SAO, and launched a story of friends and lovers who fight to keep their bonds and memories of each other in a virtual fighting game while trying to reach the top, and find out what exactly the accelerated world, a virtual copy of the real world where the fighting game is played, is. Toradora by Yuyuko Takemiya is a high school drama rom-com featuring an awkward kid with the looks of a delinquent who befriends the infamous hot-headed palm top tiger, a small girl with a huge personality and huge reputation. And who could forget the award-winning 86 about a group of kids sent to fight drones in a secret division by a racist regime? These are just a few examples of the colorful stories you'll find in these books. There are exceptions to some of those aspects I mentioned, such as Hyoka, which actually uses a beautiful cover that is a simple photograph of a school corridor. Despite this, some people determine whether a book is a light novel based on the cover and if it has anime on it. That is generally pretty safe, since most Japanese lit gets new covers for English releases, unlike light novels, but it is still difficult to define a light novel using that method, especially when the book is a Japanese copy. There are actually quite a few pieces of J-Lit with manga-style illustrations. Many people get confused when they read or hear the term light novel, but that's because the term is waseigo, an English language term created in Japan for Japanese use. As such, the light part doesn't refer to the trim size or the length of the book. Rather, the light refers to the simplification of one of the Japanese writing systems called kanji. Light novels tend to use less kanji when they can, and hardly ever use super complex or old kanji without it being needed for the story itself. It tries to eliminate the need for the Japanese audience to whip out their kanji dictionaries, just to have a read, which is an actual thing in Japan. You can see how this reason for calling them light novels is lost in translation. Another misconception I see a lot is that people call light novels manga but in words. There is a certain amount of truth in that, but of course there would be when most of the popular light novels get manga based on them. Japan is a mixed-media culture just like we are, perhaps even more so. 
And of course, many light novels share tropes with manga, but that's simply the influence of pop culture that already drives a lot of the authors. It's like saying that Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings are the exact same thing, when really, they're just part of the same genre and Game of Thrones was inspired by the Lord of the Rings, even though they're about totally different things and you could totally hate one and love the other. It's a huge difference once you actually start reading those two series. Or for an even better analogy, apples and oranges. You can compare them like how ripe apples are better than rotten oranges, but you can't say that they're the same thing. They're both brightly colored fruits and both have some kind of nutritional value. They have that same zest about their taste that makes your brain go fruit when you bite in. Everything else is completely different. Start eating a little bit more of each and you realize that there are little aspects of them, like mechanisms, that you like and hate. In the end, you like one of them better. They can't really be called the same thing at that point despite their blatant shared qualities and relation. In light novels, those mechanisms are the mechanics of prose. You can allow your main character to become a lot more fleshed out if you write in first person. They seem far more alive. You can do short, rapid lines that almost punch the reader. You have so much more free reign to make anything as complex as you want without having to worry about drawing it over and over under a time limit. You can't exactly do that in a visual medium like manga without damaging those visual mechanics that the manga has, such as direction, page layout, eye movement, distribution of text, etc. There are even more important differences, such as how much material is put into a single volume of each, the flexibility of page count for light novels that manga just lacks, how manga volumes only contain a set number of chapters rather than distinct sections or entire story arcs like light novels do. When you buy a light novel, you're guaranteed that the book is still going to be pretty decent standalone, even if it's in the middle of a larger arc, because it will almost always end on a resolution to something, or the revelation of a new conflict, unlike manga, where you'll sometimes grab a volume where nothing happens, or the entire book is one single fight scene. In fact, I say that VNs are closer to light novels than manga is to either one of them, but let's leave visual novels for another day. So you know what they are, but why should you read them? The answer is so simple I can give one simple word in response. Intrigue. Light novels themselves are intriguing. Light novel authors themselves are intriguing. The publishing process in Japan is interesting, and the expansion of the medium here in the West is interesting. Light novels themselves are kinda in this vacuum where these authors can just write what they want. It can sometimes be disastrous, but it can really be something special as well. Many of the writers are amateurs, and some were even handpicked from the internet by their publishers to put their passion projects in print. Some writers are hardcore veterans in the industry as well, and basically anyone can join the industry if a publisher thinks they have what it takes. There are a bunch of light novel contests that many people enter each year for the chance to win a grand prize, as well as the chance to get their submission printed. Because of the many backgrounds these authors come from, some become friends and the industry is much closer due to how small it is. In fact, it's almost like a community with the edge of economic competition, and it's very interesting to watch. If you were to jump in right now, you'd notice that many stories about people getting transported to fantasy worlds have become really profitable but pretty oversaturated as of late. These isekai stories are some of the kinds of series that publishers are picking up from the internet. But despite the similar outline they all share, some are actually very fresh and even great works of writing. Writer Tape Nagatsuki crafted an amazing introspection of modern day youths in his series ReZero starting life in another world. It follows Subaru Natsuki, who, like any other protagonist in this genre, gets whisked away to another world. Soon he befriends a girl after she saves him and they go to retrieve her lost item. She tells him her name is Satella. They eventually find her item just after nightfall, but all of a sudden, the two are murdered by a serial disemboweler. Subaru wakes up to find himself in the town square just as he was when he first came to this world. ReZero is the story of a boy with the ability to return to a previous point in time triggered only by death. In a cruel world he doesn't understand, his stubborn personality and all of his faults and failures will be revealed and put to the test in a never-ending gauntlet of death where the only way out is to improve your information and your own person until you can reach the end. 
The series has a slow start because it needs to get all of this information to the reader without rushing itself. Other than the first book, which is still pretty good after the first death loop, the series is absolutely fantastic. I find the story even more interesting when I take into consideration that the author Tafe Nagatsuki is trying to make a point about what society is doing to youths and what problems show up in modern day teenagers. I completely missed that in the anime, but finally caught on when I read the first book and the author made it a point to refer to Subaru as a truant and a millennial. Nothing a writer puts into their work is an accident, and taking into account that Nagatsuki is actually in his 30s as well as what development Subaru gets throughout the series and how he's portrayed, I can safely say that this is definitely his intention. The messages and thrill of reading this murky yet hopeful series make it stand out from the rest of the isekai subgenre. Even within this fad are some really good series. Whether they purposefully subvert the tropes of the subgenre, or are just a really good series despite following the cues of its brethren, there's at least something to love even within this oversaturated fad. But remember that if you want to avoid isekai altogether, there are also other great titles with vastly different content. Classroom of the Elite is done by the duo of writer Shogo Kinugasa and illustrator Shunsaku Tomose, who work together on many other projects. Classroom of the Elite is a commentary about the value that hierarchy places on different people and how it's a terrible practice that begins even as early as school. It's a message that is pretty common in media, but the way this message is brought across to the reader is very different from most Hollywood movies and Western world novels with the same theming. With a main character put in D class, the lowest class in his grade, he faces hardships from everyone else who sees him and his classmates as worthless. The main character has a very firm outlook on all of it, but keeps a completely uninterested demeanor. It's one of those series that is really good in book form, where any visual medium adaptation would lose something great from the series. Classroom of the Elite's greatest strength is its main character, its narration, and its complete focus on the idea of the school cast. I want to take note that I find the idea that the lowest in the school are seen as worthless despite the fact that everyone is in a classroom of the elite very poignant. They may be the lowest geniuses, but they're still geniuses. Despite that, they're held at an amazingly low level of respect. In that balance, it finds a way to make the impossible possible where the audience can highly identify with geniuses. The idea that the series is very anti-establishment also helps a lot. It's one of those series that completely captures a youthful struggle against society and that pure sense of rebellious youth while being intensely intriguing. These are just some of the interesting stories that light novels are able to tell, and what's pretty neat is that you always get an afterword by the author at the end of each book volume. It can range from Kazuma Kamachi's discussion of how he comes up with the concepts for every adventure his characters go on, to a personal story like that of Reki Kawahara and the cat he met in the countryside. These are always a blast to read, to the point where it's constantly stated in the afterwords themselves that some readers read the afterword before reading the rest of the book, or even before purchasing the book. The authors take note of that and have to warn whenever they want to discuss spoilers from the volume. It's quite funny. But they always end in a list of thank yous. It makes you feel more intimate and connected with the book. Despite light novels being an industry, it gives off an impression that these writers care about their works and legitimately feel grateful to you, the one reading the book they worked so hard on. And it makes it feel personal and like you almost know the author. The authors worked so hard to get their books out. The light novel community is close and the light novel community is dedicated both fans and creators alike. But the creators who write these series can be the real intrigue. They're even the real story behind their work, where knowing about them and reading their work blends into a single experience. It's an experience where nobody can tell where reality ends and fiction begins. No better example to share with all of you than the awe-inspiring struggle of Shiro Shirotori. There's a link in the description to a fantastic piece by Castell about the story of Shiratori's rise from nothing. 
It's an emotional read, and Shiratori's series, The Ryuo's Work Is Never Done, has become a window into the heart and soul of a man once crushed by his worthlessness and others' scorn, and a man who has now channeled his intense struggle into an unassumingly cutesy series to find success, respect, and companionship. Trust me, Shiratori's life, as told by afterwards in Noreen Ryuo and in interviews, is a real inspiring underdog story that gets me teary-eyed each time I see the man's current success. Please do yourself a massive favor and read Castell's piece on Shiratori and his work The Ryuo's Work Has Never Done, which will be down in the description. As much as the industry can become a crushing force for some, it may be one of the most intriguing things about light novels. The whole world of light novels is far greater than anyone can really estimate, and since light novels have just finally made their permanent residence here in the West, you can watch firsthand as the industry grows. Companies like Seven Seas and Yen Press have been putting out light novels for a few years with an ever-expanding library of great titles. There have also been startups like J Novel Club and Soul Press popping up and finding success. Every con season, you can expect some great license announcements and a lot of cheering, but also many new unknown titles. Recently, J Novel Club announced around 9 or 10 licenses at Anime Expo 2018 alone, with autograph signing and panels for Aoju Monji, one of their most successful authors. That's right, they brought him stateside for the fans to meet. That's the kind of synergy you can find between certain English and Japanese publishers. Watching these companies expand their horizons and the crazy reactions from other fans is one of the highlights of being a fan of light novels. All of these together is really the heart of why reading light novels is so fun and interesting. And the best part is that what you heard today was only the beginning. Everything is interesting and waiting to be explored by you. The characters, the plot, the worlds, the authors, the industry, and even yourself at times. Thanks for watching. And thank you for watching my first ever scripted video. Uh, I run a blog called Ranobay Plus Books, where you can find blog posts about light novels, manga, uh, regular novels, uh, in video games there, as well as uh, scripts for videos like this one. You can find the script to this video on there. Uh, and it, I wrote that script a while ago. It took over a month to make this video, believe it or not. Uh, I'm actually going to college, like, actually tomorrow as I record this. This isn't going- this po- this is going to be post when I'm at college. And, which means I'm not going to have as much time as I usually do to make videos, but you can expect me to make some videos. I will try to make videos when I can. It's just I might not have enough time to like record the audio very often, but I will I will try to make videos. Uh, but I made this video because I love light novels. Uh, I hope that through this you learn something about light novels. Uh, you're willing to give light novels a try. Uh, which you can purchase light novels uh, from Yen Press, uh, their Yen On label. You can do Seven Seas' uh, <laughs> aptly named light novel line. Uh, you can go on to J Novel Club right now, and you can actually read some of their stuff for free, which is very cool. Uh, you can also support Soul Press, which is one of the newest... Uh, light novel publishers, and they also do visual novels as well. And like I said, I'm, uh, let's leave uh, visual novels for later. <laughs> that That's a whole other beast. I'm not even done with light novels yet. But if you're interested, I am on the Light Novel Podcast. That's right, the Light Novel Podcast. There is only one, and it is hosted by Justice R. Stone, uh, a very, very good light novel YouTuber. You should also check out his stuff. He does stuff like uh, single volume reviews of light novels and uh, light novel ratings weekly, like which light novels are selling the most in Japan and what they're about. Uh, for the past few weeks, interestingly enough, uh, one of the most popular ones has been a Kirby light novel, which I love Kirby, and uh, that's never going to get released here, but 
please viz please but yeah light novel podcast uh it is on youtube it's on itunes and the light novel podcast website i will leave links in the description to those or you can just uh look it up on itunes youtube or the light novel website um the next video that i'm going to do is a review of strongest gamer let's play in another world uh and i will see you guys then but until then start reading light novels please they're good they're interesting and they're fun and i love them i'll see you guys later <laughs>